Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So here I have another Visconti from my collection. And this is a very, very special Visconti. And one that I have been uh, using for what was uh, over a year now. Uh, I managed to acquire this uh, from the uh, Toronto Pen Show. A very close friend managed to pick this up for me and ship it to me and I will show you here. Now the box is, is a little bit, this has come from another collector that as I understand it sadly passed away. So the box is a little bit worse for wears, the outer box and also the inner box a little bit and I'll show you here. I'm, this comes in a lovely wooden lacquered silver box but it is missing part of the box there. So let me open the box and I'll show you. This is the Visconti Camelot. And if I show you here, you have the Visconti logo. And then you have this brochure. And if I show you the brochure, it comes here. Camelot the Castle. In medieval legends and folklore, Camelot was the kingdom of Arthur, the centre of his splendid court, presided by such gallant knights as Sir Gawain, Parsifal, Lancelot and Galahad, and other knights of the Round Table. Camelot was first mentioned in a work by the French poet Chrétien de Troyes in the second half of the 12th century. Throughout the 13th century, Camelot is mentioned again and again in French chivalric poetry, until it becomes one and the same with the famous legend of the Round Table. The Camelot of the poetic legends is a mythical land of enchanted forests and mysterious castles, where magic spells are everyday events. Here King Arthur and his queen, Guinevere, reign in a kingdom inspired by the French chivalric code. Arthur's knights constantly perform heroic feats, fighting dragons, saving damsels in distress, or seduced by wicked fairies in disguise, always confronting danger of all kinds, both physical and supernatural, with Camelot always the centre of their universe, the beginning and the end of each adventure. So there you can see, it's a lovely fitting pen. And to describe the pen itself, the distinctive feature of our newest addition to the Visconti line of fountain pens is its seamless filigree, a hand braided 0.3 millimeter silver wire, recalling the coat of mail once worn by medieval knights. This braided filigree, still soft, is then welded to improve its consistency. Final polishing and plating gives the masterpiece its distinctive and unique beauty. The clip, incorporating a special spring-loaded mechanism, is inspired by the mythical sword of King Arthur's Excalibur. The pen is exquisitely embellished with emblems and decals typical of the Middle Ages. The heart of the pen is the mythical Visconti power filler activated, as usual, from the blind cap. The screw on detachable nib is hand decorated, two toned in an 18 karat gold. And there were 199 fountain pens worldwide in red ebonite and 999 in the black lucite with the special sterling silver filigree. Now I have the one that is out of 999. And you can see here how they actually made the pen. So this is actually quite intriguing. How they actually made that filigree. And you can see the red ebonite versus the, the silver. You also get a guarantee or ID card. Uh, this one doesn't have the number filled out on it. But it's of 999. And here you can see the Camelot. And this to me is a striking pen. It's a really lovely pen. And it's a pen that I'm so glad I was able to add to my collection. You can see here, if I zoom in, 
the filigree here on this wire is absolutely stunning. So you can see that it has this herringbone effect going around the pen. And then at the top, you have this dome here. And then you have the Excalibur sword uh, doubled up as a clip. Now, it is a very, very tight clip. So it's not a clip that I would normally use. And I, to be quite honest, I do not use clips on pens. I very rarely use them. But you can see here the, the gold trim and, and the lovely artwork there. And then likewise, that is here as well, both on the cap band and on the center band of the pen. You can see that chain mount is absolutely exquisite. And then again, you have that gold here, a gold band. And then you have the PowerVac filling knob. And you'll see here, this is 979 of 999 pens. So this pen for me is a very, very special pen. I didn't know this pen existed until I started to see some pictures of it at the Toronto Pen Show and when I saw it I really liked the look of this pen and sadly it was from a collector who had passed away as I understand it his family were liquidating the pens were at the Toronto Pen Show so I was able to pick this up for quite a good price so let me show you here the pen is inked up so I'm not going to pull out the the power vac knob but i will show you you basically unscrew this and then you pull out the knob but i'm not going to pull out the knob because i don't want to eject ink out everywhere but this is a pen that i am constantly writing with and you'll see here it has an 18 karat gold nib and this nib is a medium nib it is very very wet and I really do love how this, this nib writes. It has black lucite here on the section. Now there is a bit of a step down here, but like with many of these step downs, it doesn't interfere with how I hold my pens. The threads are maybe a little bit low, but again, they're not sharp in any way. So even though my finger does touch the threads a little bit, it doesn't impact me in any way, shape or form. But you can see here that the pen is actually quite a nice size. So you cannot post the cap. It is not designed to do so. It will not even fit on there. And you don't need to. This really is a pen that actually fits the hand very, very well. So let's do some size checks and a weight check. The length of the pen we are looking at around about 150 millimeters and then the cap is about 78 millimeters if I remove the cap from the tip of the tines we are looking about 130 millimeters so that is a pen that I class as being in oversized territory let's do a weight check so this is a pen that is inked up and it is just under 59 grams so it is a weighty pen now obviously this is made of a silver filigree and the cap is just over 22 grams and then the body is just over 34 grams almost 34 and a half grams so it's quite a weighty pen but it's actually a nice weight it doesn't feel heavy when i write with a pen now granted i do like heavier pens i'm not one for a light pen but i do find that this pen actually feels really really nice in the hand now, I think let's do a comparison with some other pens in my collection. So from left to right, we have the Visconti Speakeasy, 
we have the Visconti Belgica, the Visconti Opera Master Golden Dust, the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico, the Visconti Camelot, the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age, and this is the Marzi edition, the Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog, the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Swirl, the Visconti Luxor Obelisk, and the Visconti Corsani 90 in the stacked celluloid. Now let's do a writing sample. This is the Visconti Camelot. Now this was actually made in 2000, so it's quite an old pen. So it's 18, well 19 years old now. It's a gorgeous pen. Uh, it's an 18 carat gold and it's a medium nib. Now, the ink in here, I have had Mont Blanc Oyster Grey in here a few times, but the ink in here today I have, which is an ink that I've been inking it up with a lot now, is Mont Blanc Lavender Purple. And I really love this ink. It's a lovely dark ink. Now in terms of line variation, it's a medium nib. It's an 18 karat gold nib, so I can push it a little bit more. But you're not gonna get a huge amount of line variation out of it. That was me not having the nib aligned properly because I'm trying to do this around the camera tripod. Now if I do a wetness test, you can see that this is quite a wet pen and also the ink is quite wet as well. But this really, really is a lovely, lovely writer and I really do love this pen. It's a gorgeous pen to have in my collection and this is a pen I am very glad I have, I have added. Being in England I've obviously heard the stories of Camelot and Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table and this pen speaks to me in so many ways. So I really do like this. I love that although it's not a, a direct comparison of the Excalibur Sword I do like that they, the Visconti have done something unique here with a sword as the clip. It's a pen that I really do love and really love that I have in my collection. So thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.